That's pianist and composer Nathan Shirley in our studios here at WCQS with an improvisation to begin his uh, concert with us here on the air. Nathan, welcome. Thank you for being with us. Thanks. Um, so w- what, is, uh, what is the place of improvisation? How, how does that fit into what you do? And well, um, it's interesting because these days most people tend to think of jazz uh, when they hear the word improvisation, yeah, right. um, and rightfully so. That's the, typically where you hear uh, musicians improvise. Um, of course, in the history of classical music, um, composers especially did a lot of improvisation, and the further back you go, the more there was. Um, also, as the, the composer-pianist tradition began to wane, improvisation also began to wane in the realm of classical music. Um, as a classical composer and pianist, I would like to think that I'm at least doing a small part in helping revive uh, both the composer and pianist tradition and classical improvisation. Hmm. Yeah, it, you, now that you mention it, there are stories about Beethoven, Mozart, um, just improvising for hours <laughs> on on a almost like a parlor game. You know, that someone right. would throw out a theme, and and the, and then they would just spend hours or minutes <laughs> improvising on that. Yeah, and, and reading some of the uh, the documentation about um, people that witnessed and were able to listen to Beethoven's improvisations, for example, they say that he he could improvise on anything and make not only the music interesting but the form interesting and hmm. and everything was woven together so so thoroughly it was almost like a completed composition <laughs> um which i i'm not going to try and say i'm anywhere close to holding a candle <laughs> up to beethoven's improvisation but uh it's certainly something that i like to aspire towards yeah i i was noticing as you were playing just then and not to talk too much because i want you to play some more but uh that that uh, speaking of form and and things, that was part of the Im- improvisation that you did just did for us. There there were contrasting sections. There was uh, kind of a, a beginning and an end to it. I, I guess and I'm sure you know Hopefully. more being on that part <laughs> on that end of it than I than I perceive on this part. But uh, so that's something that you think about in addition to just. Uh, I guess a lot of us, a lot of lay people, a lot of us think of improvisation as just playing whatever comes into your mind. But I think there's more right. to it than that. I guess is what I'm getting to. When I was um, when I was a, a child, before I ever took piano lessons, I I would climb up to the piano and hit random notes, listen to the sound, and if I played something that caught my ear, I would repeat it. Mm. Um, and I think that's that's sort of the beginning of all improvisation is this experimentation, which then can lead to more structure and development Mm. and that sort of thing. Um, And ultimately, all composition starts with improvisation, whether it's in the composer's mind or at the piano. But that concept of experimenting with musical ideas and playing around with, with different sounds, I think, is crucial to the creative, the creative side of composition. Yeah. Good. We're speaking with uh, composer and pianist Nathan Shirley. Uh, well, let's. Uh, how about we hear some of your compositions now? Well, we've actually, in a way, heard a composition, but let's hear some <laughs> some uh, some other uh, some other of your works. If that's fine. All right, some more fully thought out works here. There you go. Um, I'll play a piece, a very brief piece called Mirrors, which was uh, commissioned by Daniel Austin, who is a scientist at NASA. Um, being an intellect, he, uh, I think, appreciated the quality in this piece where, which I was attempting to do, not just to create a, a piece um, interesting musically, but also interesting the way it's put together. So mm-hmm. the two hands are a mirror image of each other, what the right hand does. The left hand does the exact inverse of so you create this mirror image and it's basically an etude piece a study um, 
at faster speeds, it, it can be more of a concert piece. And then directly after that, I'll play Cultus, which was um, written as a homage to Dmitry Shostakovich, and it uses his four-note signature, which he used throughout many of his compositions. Um, so I've woven that into the second piece, Cultus, uh, in a way that is a little subtle at first and then becomes pretty obvious at the end. Excellent. This is uh, pianist and composer Nathan Shirley. Pianist Nathan Shirley, live in our studios here at WCQS, performed his own works, Cultus and Mirrors. Uh, Nathan, thank you very much. Wow. I, that, that Beautiful music. And I have to say your, your explanation or your, your, uh, your words about the uh, music were very enlightening and helped to enjoy what, what you played later, which, of course, makes sense. Um, right. <laughs> so... Uh, you, you mentioned Shostakovich and that last piece being kind of a tribute to him. Um, there, uh, is Shostakovich one of those composers that has inspired you uh, or been a, 
uh, yes, he, he certainly has. Um, I my composition teacher was uh, Russian, and she studied under um, Kachatorian, mm. and n she didn't know Shostakovich directly, but had some contact with him. And um, all of the the Russian composers have been very close to me, uh, mm. even when I was younger. And so Shostakovich, Prokofiev, Skriab, and Mussorgsky, mm. they've all been a, a huge influence on my own music, mm. um, as well as the, the earlier composers, certainly. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is probably a good time to, to, to talk about this. You mentioned your composition teacher. I, I understand that to a large degree, you are self-taught as a composer and pianist. Right. Um, more so as a, as a pianist, I would say. Mm. I, I started taking lessons when I was 10 years old, and um, not real seriously until I was 15. Uh, but my, my piano teachers were uh, not exactly typical, and I, <laughs> I think I, I got more out of uh, trying to push myself with playing more advanced pieces and uh, reading things outside of com uh, piano lessons, uh, I certainly gained a lot of technique and things that I wouldn't have otherwise. Mm. Um, but I think more than anything, I I got a lot through my own experimentation um, in composition too. But uh, without my my uh, composition teacher in high school, who uh, is Olga Harris, who um, was the student of Cacciatorian, without her help, I I think I would have certainly been kind of lost at sea. <laughs> so I, I can't say that composition was uh, completely self-taught, but I, I certainly was doing a good bit of it before and certainly took it in a different direction later. Mm -hmm. Nathan will be uh, performing uh, much of his own work and some uh, works by, uh, as you mentioned, Shostakovich, Prokofiev, and others uh, in a recital Sunday afternoon at the uh, Asheville Art Museum. Uh, part of the Pianoforte concert series, and we'll, we'll hear more about that in, in just a few minutes. Harry Rowney with the uh, Asheville Art Museum Board, who's on the Asheville Art Museum Board and produces the Pianoforte series, is with us, and we'll talk a little bit more about the concert then. What's next? What else? What do you have for us? Well, I thought I could perform a uh, selection from Images. Uh, this is a set of ten pieces that I composed, each one inspired by a painting, and most of these paintings come from the Renaissance period, uh, and they're they're very different stylistically from one another, but um, but thematically they all share uh, the same characteristics that they they're of religious um, uh, nat uh, religious nature, and the uh, four that I'm going to play for you now, the first one is one of the darker ones, um, which depicts Judith holding the severed head of Holifrenes. Um, That's dark. Right. <laughs> it's, it's one of the most dark paintings in the series, certainly. And uh, it's, it's one that several uh, composer, uh, painters rather uh, did over the years. Um, and this one in particular caught my attention. Um, the others are a little lighter, uh, more or less, that I've that I'll be performing today, um, of some of the saints, Saint Cecile, uh, and Mary Magdalene, and Saint Francis. Um, not quite in that order, but you should hopefully hear some tranquility in those later pieces. Uh, I will say one thing about the the fourth piece, which will be the last of the images I'll perform. The, this was depicting the uh, end of St. Cecile's life, St. Catherine, rather, her life. And she, the legend goes, she was to be executed on a torturing wheel, one of those wheels that slowly ripped you, your uh, skeleton apart. <laughs> and... Um, as soon as she touched the wheel, it burst into pieces and fell across the floor. Uh, so then the, the king who was um, to execute her ordered that she was beheaded. Uh, so this painting depicts that. It's, 
not the uh, not the beheading, but her in a more graceful stance, standing above the pieces of this torturing wheel and uh, holding a sword. So a good bit of variety here. And we'll start with Judith. Very good. This is pianist Nathan Shirley.
Composer and pianist Nathan Shirley performed four of the images uh, for solo piano live in our studios from the Vitust Study Club Performing Arts Studio here at WCQS. I'm Dick Cole. Nathan, that's uh, very, very nice. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, thanks for bringing that music to us. And we're going to hear uh, Nathan perform some more. Uh, and again, a reminder that uh, you're listening to WCQS, member-supported public radio here in Western North Carolina, and that Nathan will be performing uh, this music and much more at a recital uh, at the Asheville Art Museum on Sunday afternoon, part of the Piano Forte concert series there at the museum. Harry Rowney is on the board of the museum and uh, is the producer of the uh, Piano Forte series and is also with us in our studios here at WCQS. Harry, welcome. Thank you for bringing Nathan to us. Oh, uh, thanks to, to you and, and the station for making it possible. Um, so tell, tell people, if, if they're not familiar with the Pianoforte uh, concert series, uh, well, kind of what it's like. And uh, I, think, I think it's particularly interesting that the, an art museum is sponsoring a concert, concert series. Well, in one sense, it's not that unusual. Um, museums have been doing this over the years, uh, finding other ways to use the space that they have available you know, to bring in you know, perhaps a new audience, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to it. So we've been doing this for about, you know, about six years. Okay. Um, and um, these concerts all take place in one of our galleries, Gallery 6. Um, and our mission for the museum uh, in part is to emphasize art and artists of the Southeast, and the other part of that mission statement, you know, is to concentrate on works of the 20th and 21st century. So here we have um, in this particular recital in Gallery 6 uh, a young um, composer pianist locally uh, yeah. as, you know, as such. Um, and very much a, a modernist. Mm. So this concert specifically will fit very close to what the Asheville Museum is all about. This all got started in the past because I personally have felt that there were not enough opportunities for talented musical, particularly pian pianists, to perform in Asheville. And the museum at least had that ability mm -hmm. to provide space. And that what we do is to rent the Hamburg Steinway from Diana Wortham Theater uh, to make use of that instrument between you and me. Sounds better in the galleries than it does in Diana Wortham Theater. Um, and the pianists enjoy very much playing on that instrument. So uh, it's very much of a salon you know, type of environment. We can see you know, legally and comfortably about 50, you know, uh -huh. you know, 50 people. So it is, it's really intimate. It's so it is a very intimate, uh, um, you know, setting. And what I've done and is to encourage the pianist to engage in conversation with the, uh, with the audience so that they are aware of various nuances of what they're doing. So it really is a salon, you know, environment. That's wonderful. I, um, and I think that would work especially well with, with Nathan, as it, since he's be, he'll be talking about his own compositions. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned before we went on the air that there, there's an exhibit in this gallery that uh, lends itself to the, the yes, modernist. Yes, there, there, there's, there's, a, there's a new ex exhibit which opened uh, uh, about four or five weeks ago. Uh, and it includes works which have been in the museum's permanent collection. You know, which are quite contemporary, mm. meaning 20th, you know, 20th century art, yeah. and we will become, would be, uh, you know, a stunning background for what Nathan is going to do on Sunday. So um, listeners have two reasons to come <laughs> to the Asheville oh, yeah. Museum on Sunday, <laughs> you, know, you know, for the art that's on the wall, of course, you know, yeah. and to listen to, uh, you know, contemporary music. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that that you can seat comfortably and legally <laughs> about fifty people in the uh, 
in the space. Uh, are there tickets available at this yes, point? Yes, there are tickets. Oh, good. There are tickets available, and I will give you a phone number. You can call and make a, you make a reservation. You have to pay for them when you, you get there on Sunday. Uh, the museum's number is 253 3227. 253 3227. Very good. And as usual, if you forget that, you can call us here at WCQS. I don't know if you can remember our number. Our number is 210-4800. But you can certainly get in touch with us, and we'll, we'll try to put you in touch with the right people. Again, that's uh, Harry Rowney, who is the force behind the Piano Forte concert series at the Asheville Art Museum. And uh, Nathan will be playing as part of the next concert this Sunday at 3 o'clock. And Harry, I know you... you just looking ahead, there's another one coming up in March. There will be one in in March 11th. Okay, and I can I will make that announcement now. <laughs> that will be with John Cobb, uh, pianist, and Jason Posnick, violinist. Oh, so it will be piano, violin, um, uh, works uh, at you know, that March recital. Very good. Okay, well we'll say more about that as we get closer to it. Uh, Nathan, can you um, play a little more for us? Uh, certainly. Um, and if I might add one, one yeah, thing about please. the uh, concert coming up, uh, the website also has information. If you visit the Asheville Art Museum website, you can get ticket information. And um, it might not be a bad idea to get tickets immediately as they <laughs> tend to sell out pretty Pretty, pretty uh, rapidly. Yeah, okay. And and uh, I just Googled uh, Asheville Art Museum. Is the, or searched for that is the way I found it. But, uh, um, yeah, there, and there's inf- more information about Nathan on there as well and a link to your site, I believe. Um, and if there's not, uh, Nathan, your website is just... It's easy. It's my name, okay. NathanShirley.com. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nathan, Nathan, thanks for... You're giving that information. You can tell that Nathan is a modernist because he's thinking in terms, you know, of websites, and <laughs> I'm still thinking in terms of telephone numbers. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Well, in these days, musicians have to be a little business savvy as well. So. Right. You bet. You bet. Okay. So uh, Nathan Shirley is with us and, and has uh, some more music for us. Right. I, um, I thought it would be interesting to, um, and I'll be doing this in the concert on Sunday as well, performing a little bit of music that you wouldn't typically hear in a piano concert. Um, This is a little bit of music written for children, and I find it particularly interesting uh, to program this because you you don't think of modernist composers like Stravinsky, certainly, as uh, writing music that has a, a very lyrical recognizable melody, Mm. um, and certainly harmonies and everything else that's uh, involved in that. But uh, all of these composers that I'll be performing did write music for children, and uh, some very, very effectively. Certainly, Bela Bartok wrote um, a huge amount of work for children. Uh, Much of it is very accessible, and certainly uh, Sergei Prokofiev has, has written his share of uh, children's music, not uh, not to overlook Peter and the Wolf, right, um, right, but also course. plenty of piano music as well. And so on the concert, I'll be performing some pieces by Stravinsky that I think not only capture his his style and his uh, spirit in the music, but are also written in a very straightforward, lyrical, uh, and quite frankly, very beautiful uh, way. Uh, right now, I thought it would be interesting to play a piece, a uh, children's piece, by Kachitorian, my teacher's teacher. This is Melody, uh, and I believe there is a second title that is sometimes used, Ivan Sings, or Ivan Sings. So, Kachitorian. Very good.
a beautiful little piece. It's uh, music by Aram Kataturian, performed by Nathan Shirley. What a nice, nice little piece. That's and there are, there are so many like that. It's, it's amazing. I think that's certainly one of the more common ones that children might play today, but mm. there's so many that are just overlooked by piano teachers, I think, that are uh, very accessible and very, teach very good musical uh, things. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Uh, again, a reminder that Nathan is performing Sunday at 3 o'clock at the Asheville Art Museum. I'll ask him to play maybe one more piece, one of your own. Sure. Um, I have a piece that was written as a um, gift to my um, best friend's mother and, and stepfather, uh, who have a home in Wake, Lake Wiley, or at Lake Wiley, <laughs> they, um, they've given uh, quite a few house concerts there that I've performed, and so this was the least I could do to uh, compose a piece for them, and uh, I performed it, premiered it at their home um, earlier this year. The, uh, the piece is stylistically a little less modern than some of my other works, but... Um, Last year, in 2010, it marked the 200th anniversary of the birth of uh, Chopin. Mm. So I thought it would also be interesting to take some of his style and mix it in a bit with this piece. Um, one interesting thing that I might say about the opening theme is Chopin had a style of playing piano where the two hands were not necessarily in sync with one another. Um, it's a bit difficult to describe, but today most pianists slow down and speed up with both hands in sync. So what the left does, the right mm. follows along. Um, Chopin would keep the left hand fairly strict, almost metronomically strict, uh, with a constant beat. And in his right hand, he would let go in and out of rhythm wow. to that. Um, and it wasn't just Chopin who did this, but a, a lot of pianists of that time and a little bit later. But it quickly died off, and um, today it's practically unheard of. Uh, so in the opening of this piece, I thought it would be interesting to do a little of that, and I notated the specific uh, rhythms so that today's pianist might more easily uh, tackle this, which wow. it, it's... Not as difficult as it seems like it would be. <laughs> it seems pretty difficult, yeah. you're right. <laughs> it, it, certainly, it certainly is very foreign uh, if you're not used to it, so it, it does take some practice. Uh, so the opening is notated uh, so that you can clearly see roughly where the rhythms will go. Um, and if you listen carefully to this piece, you'll hear it come back, and hopefully you'll catch a little bit of that Chopin feel. Very good. So this is a piece, Twilight on the Lake? Twilight on the Lake. And I, I might add that the, uh, the piece is um, obviously depicting twilight at the lakeside, but it's, it's not all tranquil. Sometimes there are uh, ferocious storms that come through and uh, complete with lightning and rain <laughs> and wind and everything else. So that will certainly show up in the composition as well. Okay. Very good. This is a composer and pianist Nathan Shirley and his work Twilight on the Lake.
Twilight on the Lake by Nathan Shirley, performed by Mr. Shirley uh, in the Vitast Study Club Performing Arts Studio here at WCQS. Nathan, thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate your spending some time with us this afternoon. Thanks for bringing some your music and uh, no folks are looking forward to your recital on Sunday afternoon where they'll get to hear some of this music and much more. Right. Um, best wishes to you. It's really quite wonderful. Thanks. Uh, I, I can, I'll tell folks quickly that you know, when Nathan came into the studio, he brought a new CD with him. So <laughs> you have a new <laughs> CD that's available, is that right? That's right. It's um, available through my website or um, through Amazon or iTunes, if you prefer the download version. Ah. Uh, and it was recorded somewhat locally in uh, Brevard oh, yeah. at the Porter Center. Excellent. Excellent haul. Wonderful. You can find out more about Nathan at his website, of course, and also at the Ar Asheville Art Museum's website, um, and that is, oh, I can't remember. Well, NathanShirley.com, right? And That's it's correct. S-H-I-R-L-E-Y, mm -hmm. Shirley.com. Again, Nathan will be performing uh, as part of the Piano Forte concert series at the Asheville Art Museum Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock, and if you're uh, if you want to get your tickets in advance, which I would recommend, uh, the number there is 253-3227. Many thanks to Nathan. Thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure, and thanks for having me, Dick. And our pleasure as well. And uh, also thanks to Harry Rowney, uh, who was on the board of the uh, uh, Asheville Art Museum. Thank you for bringing Nathan. And right. thank, thank you for having us. It's a real pleasure, and thanks for being with us here at, at WCQS. I'm Dick Cole, and you've been listening to music by and performed by Nathan Shirley from the Vitust Study Club Performing Arts Studio here at WCQS Asheville, WFQS Franklin. Stay with us. In just a few seconds, we will bring you fresh air. And, of course, at 4 o'clock, it's All Things Considered from NPR. This is WCQS. Stay tuned for Fresh Air. From WHYY in Philadelphia, this is Fresh Air. I'm Dave Davies in for Terry Gross. The movie Beginner stars Ewan McGregor as a young graphic...